We have some major Toronto Raptors injury updates as Emmanuel Quickly's return looks imminent according to a recent report and Jacoby Walter, we now know how long he'll be injured with his current shoulder issue. So we'll discuss that, including Fred Van Vliet speaking out on his departure from the Toronto Raptors, what really went on behind the scenes and him leaving Toronto just a couple of seasons ago. So Lots of stuff to break down in this video, but before we do, folks, again, we are very, very close to 36,000 subscribers. You guys have been crushing it, hitting that sub button as of late, in the like button. The community's been built up like crazy here now over the past little while, so appreciate every single one of you. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so we hit that goal of 36,000 subscribers. But let's dive into the news. Let's dive into what's going on. The first thing we're taking a look at is an update on Fred Van Vliet talking about his departure from the Toronto Raptors. Now, Fred is obviously a guy that had a really cool story with the Toronto Raptors, being undrafted, winning a championship, becoming an all-star, all that type of stuff. But at the end, the fan base kind of soured on Fred Van Vliet. It felt like a ton, him being the number one guy, him and Pascal Siakam. And it was a bit of an ugly departure, it felt like, from the team, from what was said about Nick Nurse. And that was just a bad final season for the Toronto Raptors the year that Fred Van Vliet was here. And, uh, you know, obviously ended up leading the Toronto Raptors. The first real step the Toronto Raptors took to the rebuild, which is now fully in motion. But Fred Van Vliet discussed some of this in a recent discussion on the Dream on Green podcast, saying that I felt the changing of the guard. As players, you kind of get hip to the direction of the organization wants to go in here and there and everywhere. There were different kinds of contracts, and it was just so much going on behind the scenes, so I just wanted to get free agency so I could make them, uh, so that I can make them make a decision versus me doing it. So, basically entered free agency, and then basically went on and said, I could have, I could have went back. The talks didn't go exactly maybe how I wanted them to go, but, uh, then Houston comes along. So, again, if we don't, if we remember Korea correctly, everything that was going on with Fred Van Vliet, he didn't have the greatest sort of season there with the Toronto Raptors his final year. People were pretty disappointed, and uh, basically he wanted a big money contract. And frankly, despite his final season, despite the injuries he sustained, all that type of stuff, it was a career that kind of earned a big contract. He was an all-star, he won a championship, was a key piece on that championship winning team. So I get it, even if that was a couple years prior to when Fred Van Vliet was entering free agency. So, you know, it didn't really work out, didn't really come all together and perfect in unison, you know, with Fred Van Vliet and the Toronto Raptors. And basically the Raptors had offered him around $30 million, which a lot of Raptors fans thought was really high and a bit ludicrous for the value he was providing at that season specifically. But Houston came along and then offered him over $40 million per year. Again, a shorter term deal, but still a ton of money for Fred Van Vliet. So that was a, a whole situation that was happening there at that point. And then the, the part of it that we all speculated, we all saw from, uh, you know, the comments that came out from everyone is, I just wanted to get back to having fun playing basketball. Post-championship Toronto, towards the end where we were really, we, we weren't really having fun. It got to that point, and I was looking just for a new, fresh start. And that's what Fred Van Vliet kind of said regarding this situation, regarding what really went down for this team, and uh, what was really going on with uh, the Toronto Raptors behind the scenes. And that's why... Again, Nick Nurse ended up getting fired. It's why the Toronto Raptors went in the direction of going to Dark Ryokovic, saying how the vibes are up. There was a big discussion. Hey, we just want to come in, have more energy, have a lot more fun. Uh, going to last season, Masai Ujiri said that the energy, get back to playing Raptors basketball. And it wasn't really working out. And I don't think it's, you know, there was the whole discussion between the young guys, the old guys being a bit, you know, dismayed and splitting there at that point. And you could say that certainly, especially with Fred Van Vliet discussed. Hey, it felt like a changing the guard, the Raptors are moving in a younger direction. So that's just kind of how things go. I'm not bashful of Fred Van Vliet. I'm not going to come out here and roast him. You guys used to crush me out here in these videos for saying Fred Van Vliet wasn't a horrible basketball player. Again, did have an ugly end to the season, uh, what, this final season with the Toronto Raptors. But I still want to celebrate Fred Van Vliet's career as a Toronto Raptor. Undrafted guy. Shocked everyone. Was a key, key reason we beat the Milwaukee Bucks and won the NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors. So... You know, he's a, he's a career that should be celebrated in Toronto, and even though it was an ugly end, it wasn't the greatest end, he still, you know, it wasn't that fun for him, for the team, for anyone in the final moment. So, nothing crazy novel there, but interesting to see Fred Van Vliet speak out on this, but that's not the only thing we're discussing, as we have some major updates in regards to these Toronto Raptors players. I don't have the chapters brought up, but basically, the big guy that everyone's been eager to see back out there on the court is Emmanuel Quickly, and this team, you, I've seen, seen some comments get frustrated with me saying, hey, the stop saying the Raptors are cursed every team deals with injuries or stuff why are you saying they're cursed i mean i don't know how you can look at this team since last trade deadline and you know with barnes walter brown kelly Olenek, four rotation players and our superstar being out of the lineup 
Manu quickly, barely playing a single second this season, right? Jonathan Mobo, who had an exciting start to this year, right? Like all these guys being injured, and you're you're gonna tell me and again it's a meme, like, but like that th this isn't a bad bad dose of luck. This isn't a bad situation. Like there's no argument there. So I just wanted to address some of the comments there at that point. The Raptors have had brutal injury luck to start off this season, but we do have some exciting news. As essentially, uh, we have a report that's come out that reveals an update on Manuel quickly. Um, this is a Fred VanVleet stats. He has not been great. Not been great for the Houston Rockets so far this season. And he's playing ahead of uh, Reed Shepard, which some people are frustrated by. But staying on track with the current uh, discussion. But Dark Ryakovich said that IQ went through practice today and they are hopeful he plays against the LA Clippers, which is now tonight. And the same for Mobo. So again, having both those guys back in the lineup would be huge. And I know some people are happy with all the injuries that are going on because again, it leads to more losses and it leads people to uh, more, more closer to not the, not the shed head to capturing the flag, you know, capture that Cooper flag and all those types of things. So, but I really want to see IQ get back out there on the court, see what we have in the top level guys, see what we have in this core group, because again, we haven't had IQ, RJ Barrett and uh, Scotty Barnes really play together. It feels like at any point over the course of this season, since they've really been acquired, like since last March. So this is uh, something I'm very, very excited about. It looks like this return is imminent. If they're hopeful, he's playing, you know, you're updated from questionable to hopeful that they're playing. So that's a, that's a big positive there. And then we have more reports essentially coming out and saying that Jacoby Walter has re-sprained his right AC joint. He'll be held out for at least a week and reevaluated from there. And this is one that just sucks to see because again, Jacoby Walter didn't really have a chance, only played a few games for the Toronto Raptors. And it, when you're dealing with a shoulder injury, especially for your first NBA games, like training camp and stuff, it, it's tough to really get your rhythm back in your opening NBA games. Like that's just a difficult situation to have. And, you know, he's looking very confident. He's looking very strong, like way more formidable than I thought he would be for a rookie coming in, you know, playing the way he is, even though the shot wasn't going down. And again, you get more reps under your belt, that becomes more and more comfy. But now at least a week for Jacoby Walter missing more games during a season where he just wanted to find his rhythm, get comfortable, get used to NBA action. That just sucks to see. But again, I'm happy about the MOBO update. Hopefully he's returning against LA Clippers tonight. By the time this is out, maybe we already have an official no, but having a manual quickly's return look imminent for this team is going to be massive. It's going to be make these games even more exciting. Another piece to really watch and get pumped up about for Toronto Raptors fans, because again, we invested a ton of money into Manuel quickly into Scotty Barnes, and we haven't got to reap the benefits of it just, just yet in terms of uh, starting the season. So Again, very early on in the season. I'm not sure how it's going to go. Like, I, I do we have a picture of the Eastern Conference? We do not. But the Raptors are still, like, even with all the injuries, even with the tough schedule, even with everything that's going on, the Raptors are still a team that's, like, two, three games back of the third seed. So, you know, regardless of we're capturing the flag or if we just shock everyone in the Eastern Conference, win-loss, it's too early to really pick a direction out there on that front. But with Manuel quickly back, it makes the game certainly more exciting. So let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news. You guys the best thing as far as subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.